We've been talking about um, standard free energy changes. That's the that's this guy right here, delta G prime R X N. The little circle there stands for standard states. So that's the standard free energy change, but that only applies to a very narrow set of conditions. You have to have your, your substances in their standard states. So if we look at this equilibrium between liquid water and water vapor, what is the standard state for liquid water? It, well, it would be a liquid. It would just be pure water, yep. right? And what's the standard state for a gas? One atmosphere. one atmosphere. That means a partial pressure of one atmosphere of the gas. And under those conditions, the standard free energy change is positive 8.59 kilojoules per mole of water. So this is a positive number, meaning that the process is non-spontaneous. Right? So water under standard conditions does not spontaneously go from the liquid to the gas. In fact, it's the opposite. It goes from the gas to the liquid. But what happens when you spill water on the floor? Does it stay there forever? Yeah. Does it attract more water? Maybe. What does it do? It evaporates, right? Spontaneously. So how does that work? Why does spilled water evaporate spontaneously? Well, standard conditions, the partial pressure of the water is one atmosphere. In this room, is the partial pressure of water one atmosphere? No. no. Thank goodness, right? Yeah. It would be really muggy in here. <laughs> Ordinary conditions, the partial pressure of water is much less than one atmosphere. And that changes the free energy change for this equilibrium. This is standard, meaning standard conditions. So we need to calculate the free energy change for the reaction under the actual conditions. And that's what we're, we're going to talk about. So to calculate the free energy change of a reaction under non-standard conditions, that is delta G reaction without the little zero up here. So that equals the standard free energy change plus RT times the natural log of Q. Q is the reaction quotient that we learned about a couple chapters ago. T is temperature in kelvins, as always. And R, the ideal gas constant, we mostly use this value, 8.314 joules per mole kelvin, because that gives us the correct units. If you stick in liter atmospheres per mole kelvin, then you're going to have to do some converting, and that's no fun. If we have reactions involving gases, we use the reaction quotient in terms of pressure. And if we have solutions, pause that. For reactions with solutions, you know, solids to dissolved in liquids, then we use the reaction quotient in terms of concentrations. I think I was going to do something there. Maybe not. So what happens under standard conditions? Well, under standard conditions, Q will always be 1. And thus, for this reaction, Q will always be 1. And thus, the free energy change of the reaction is the same as the free energy, the standard free energy change. So here we have a graph showing free energy going up vertically and um, pressure of, partial pressure of water going from zero atmospheres up to one atmosphere. And what we see is that under normal conditions, um, like 25 degrees Celsius, the partial pressure of water is point, it's too small, point zero three one three atmospheres. Um, and that's where we'll find an equilibrium. But if Q is 1, that means that the free energy change for the reaction is equal to the free energy change for the under those conditions, because the conditions are standard conditions. 
Let me do it this way. Delta Q, del sorry. <laughs> That's delta G. And delta G prime uh, plus RT natural log Q, right? So what's if if the natural if Q is one, the natural log of one is zero, right? And so this all goes away. And under under that condition, then the water will actually condense up here at one atmosphere where Q equals one. Do you remember how to calculate Q? So here we have H2O liquid in equilibrium with H2O gas. Q is calculated, the equation is the same as for the equilibrium constant, products over reactants. So K would equal the concentration of H2O over the concentration, sorry, they're both H2O gas. <laughs> divided by H2O liquid, but liquid can't change its concentration, so we ignore that. So K equals the concentration of water in the gas state, and that is equal to Q under whatever conditions you actually have. Q applies to any set of conditions. You use what you have, and you get a value. K is only at equilibrium. So if we are at equilibrium, then Q is going to equal K. And that's getting ahead of myself, and I don't know why I even went there. Uh, yeah, any questions? That was just really a mess. I, I, just, I, I just can't bring, bring that back out of the pit. It's just down there. Okay, what about at equilibrium conditions? Well, 25 degrees Celsius, liquid water in equilibrium with water vapor will have a vapor pressure of 0 0.0313 atmospheres. That's what Q is. Okay. Um, so then we can calculate, yeah, we can. There we go. We can calculate delta G reaction. This was 8... 0.59, was that kilojoules? I think it was. Kilojoules per mole plus R 8.314. That is an 8. It was just open. It was an open 8. <laughs> Joules per mole Kelvin times the temperature, which would be 298. 0, 0 Kelvin, and the natural log of Q, 0 0.0313, right? Yeah, look at that. It works. Yeah, we got to watch out for those kilojoules. Yes? I got 8.59 from that page because this is the reaction we're looking at. So yeah, it, it's going to be whatever the standard uh, free energy change is for that reaction. Where we're looking at water, uh, the equilibrium between liquid water and water vapor. So if I do this on my calculator, let's see if I can get my brain to function. So 8.59 times 10 to the third, that is then joules per mole plus the 8.314 times the 298 times the natural log of 0 0.0313. Um, So I'm coming up with this number, which is not 
seeming exactly correct, 7.35 um, joules, which compared to 8.59 kilojoules is very small. So this is coming down to a bit of a problem of significant figures and errors. So <laughs> let's, let's look at this 8.314 times 298 times the natural log of 0 0.0313. And that is equal to negative 8582 joules per mole. This number in joules is 8590 joules per mole. These numbers are very close, right? If we consider significant figures and cut this one off here, because it has three fig, sig figs and this one would have three as well, then we end up with seven joules, um, which in comparison to the original standard uh, change is very, very small. It's essentially zero. It's supposed to come out to be zero, and I wish they could have, like, given me a better number there. But at equilibrium, the uh, free energy change for the reaction is zero. And let's think about that. When a reaction is at equilibrium, is it overall going in the forward direction or the reverse direction? It's going neither, right? It's stationary. It's a dynamic equilibrium, so both processes are happening, but overall there's no change. If we had a positive delta G, that would mean it was favoring the reactants, it was going backwards. If we had a negative delta G, it'd be favoring the products, it'd be going forward spontaneously. At equilibrium, it's not going anywhere. And so delta G for the reaction is zero. Any questions? Um, it should be joules per mole. Should be joules per mole. How does the ATM disappear? That's that's a good question. The robbers come with a big truck and they take it out of the wall. No. Um, KP is going to equal the partial pressure of H two O because we're doing this H two O. I just had an issue with the ATM this morning. Um, this is the reaction we're looking at. And so because this is a liquid, it doesn't figure into the calculation. So if we do Kp, the equilibrium constant in terms of pressure, it's the partial pressure of H2O. Equilibrium constants do not have units. And, and the way they got rid of them is they say, well, actually, this is the ratio of the partial pressure of water to 1. And so then the units cancel out. So all equilibrium constants are unitless. And all reaction quotients are unitless. And so this ATM, I was sloppy in making the slides. The water vapor at a pressure of, this is the vapor pressure of the water, which is equal to the reaction quotient. But the reaction quotient doesn't have a unit. Any other questions? Well, what about, um, that's not the right slide. How about this one? What about other non-standard conditions? We talked about equilibrium, but there's a lot of other ones, right? If you have other non-standard uh, conditions. You need to calculate the reaction quotient under those conditions and substitute it into the equation. So just in case we've forgotten, the equation is delta G reaction equals delta G standard reaction plus RT log of Q. So on a dry day, the partial pressure of water is 5 times 10 to the minus 3rd atmospheres. What is the free energy change for the reaction of liquid water evaporating? 
Well, for this reaction, Q, and we want QP, QP is going to be equal in value to the partial pressure of the water. And I just went over that on the previous slide. So QP is 5 times 10 to the minus 3. And we know from the previous slides that for this reaction, delta G standard is plus 8.59 kilojoules per mole. Somebody's making noises. I won't describe them. So delta G reaction equals, um, I'm going to write this in as joules instead of kilojoules. So that's, I just converted kilojoules to joules per mole plus 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin times the temperature in Kelvin. Um, we're assuming 25 again here. It occurs to me that maybe the problem on that other one was that I used 273 instead of 273.15. So we'll fix that here. And then the natural log of 5.00 times 10 to the minus 3rd. Delta G for the reaction is minus 13134 joules per mole, which would be minus, uh, it's probably about minus 13.13 kilojoules per mole. Is that reaction spontaneous? Yeah. Delta G is negative. It's going to happen. So on a dry day at 25 degrees Celsius, liquid water will spontaneous evapor spontaneously evaporate. Any questions? I'm kind of guessing at the significant figures there. Because it's, it's got adding in it. While, while some of you are writing stuff down, I'll, I'll look at them. Um, 8.314 times 298.15 times natural log of 0.0313. Because um, this guy comes out to be negative 8586.96941. Um, bless you. This, uh, taking the natural log of that, if we use the base 10 log rules for significant figures, would give us um, three decimal paces, possibly. Um, this could give us, uh, this would limit us to four, this would limit us to six, so I think we've got four decimal places there. And then we're adding it to this, which um, as times 10 to the third has a second decimal place, and yeah, I think that's right, actually. For those of you who care about sig figs like I do. Any other questions? Okay. So let's do um, an example. Consider the reaction at 298K, uh, H2S plus SO2 reacting to form sulfur solid in its rhombic form plus water. And delta G for the reaction is minus 102 kilojoules. Calculate, um, that's delta G standard is minus 102. Calculate delta G 
under these conditions. And it gives you partial pressures for the gases and then asks, is the reaction more or less spontaneous than under standard conditions? So what do we need to do here? We need to calculate. <laughs> calculate what? We need the reaction quotient. So I'll just write that equation up here. Dang it. Come on. Mm. I know. Are you dizzy yet? I'm trying to get you dizzy. Delta G reaction is the standard delta G plus RT natural log of Q. So we need Q. That's the first thing we have to calculate. They gave us the standard free energy change, um, so that's good. Um, but we need that Q. So Q is going to be equal to, I don't want to do it there. I'll do it on the bottom. We're using the same pattern as for an equilibrium constant. Q is going to equal the partial pressure of H2O squared, because there's a 2 in front of it. This is a solid. That doesn't play into this at all. And then divided by the partial pressures of the reactants. So we're going to get PH2S, that one's squared. And then we've got the pressure of SO2 not squared. So H2O 0 0.0100 0 squared. These, these need to be in atmospheres. But we mostly figure that you figured out how to convert pressure units, and so we don't mess with you too much on that anymore. You're welcome. I mean, there's just so many ways we could mess with you. We're trying, we're trying to keep to more um, significant ways of messing with you. So 0 0.01 squared divided by 2 squared divided by 1.5. 1, That's what I came up with. And that would have three sig figs. Everybody okay with that? So that's Q. So delta G for the reaction, um, we're going to have the negative 102 kilojoules plus the 8.314 joules per mole kelvin, um, 298K, natural log of 1.6667 times 10 to the minus 5. Thank you. It's per mole. Um, hmm. That's a good question. What? It would be per one mole of SO2. This delta G is given for the reaction as written. So it would be per one mole of SO2. But if you were looking at moles of something else, then you'd have to mess around with it. Oh. Yeah, it's a little iffy this way. What? We'll be calculating delta G for the reaction as written. But down here, 
we do we should have a per mole in here because we're going to have a per mole over here and then per mole of what? So in terms, I'm going to I'm going to put this in kilojoules, minus 129 kilojoules per mole. This, it's really this many kilojoules for the reaction as written. Did anybody else get that number? Because you're supposed to have your calculator out and you're supposed I, to be I doing it. I did in joules, but it's like the same. You just divide by 1,000 now. He forgot his calculator. He's going to regret that later. Don't you have a cell phone? It's old. It's a little, I'm a little iffy if the calculator can handle it. Well, you should try it. It's a Test it, it's a right? Break. So is this more or less spontaneous than under standard conditions? More. Why is it more spontaneous? It's more negative. Delta G is more negative. Here it's minus 129, and here it's minus 102. They're both spontaneous, but this is more spontaneous. Any questions? Thank you.